Hello and welcome to the Superpower Dead IT. I'm Peter. And I'm Rick. And today we are reviewing the film Nobody. As Look, we, oh, yeah. The brother calls Hutch and says... Uh, no, um, no, no, but we don't know at this stage that it's the brother, do we? Oh, but it's... Okay, the mysterious yeah, so voice The mysterious calls. guy calls him at home. It's like we, know, we said no no calls on this line. Yeah. And we've got 30, got 30 seconds, right, and says, yeah. you're in some trouble now. The guy, you know, you've got I don't think involved he'd... in Russian Mafia. Russian I Mafia. thought he just said, go see the barber or something. No, he just... He, I think he said something about um, you've got yourself into... Yeah, oh, something along the lines of wow! Yeah, okay. When when you let go, you really let go. You need to go see the barber. Like you've got you've got some trouble. Yeah, I think he does say. He, say, he yeah. tells him who it is and to go see the yeah. barber. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, so, who is literally a barber? Yeah. Oh no, sorry. He's at the barber shop getting his. He's haircut. getting a, a shave, and he's shave, yeah. um, he's an English actor called Colin Salmon. Um, I think he was in the one of the Resident Evil movies, maybe the first one, and he was in The Living Daylights, I reckon, the first Timothy Doughton James Bond movie. I thought he's very good in this. Yeah, he's um, cool. He's got a presence. And I, I like the way they set this one up because then, so we got Hutch going to the barber to find out about Julian, and Julian is also finding out about Hutch through the bus cab, which... We find out um, Julian collects art which is art, probably yeah. important yeah so he's got um, dimensions to him he's got a, a bit of a layer to him no everyone here is two-dimensional I, I love it um and then uh what was it the fbi get oh so uh union's got the girl trying to work out saying i can't I, and i think is, i think i read I can't that find out about this guy i think that um the woman that plays the girl is the director's partner i think i think i read that and what you do for family, but I do like the, I like the fact that when she digs deeper, finds out who he is, gets his file, goes into Julian's office, just throws the file on the floor, and just goes, "I'm out." I'm out. So, you don't uh, have to pay me. So yeah, it's like it's just, like the little, it's like the folklore building up around this yeah. character. No. Yeah, and I mean, like, like the guy locking himself in the room, and then she's yeah. gone, oh, "I'm out. No, I'm out." So. Julian, of course, being the arrogant person he is, it's like, you know, well, no one can mess with me. Um, Hutch seems, I think he seemed even less perturbed, like he's finding about this person. His biggest concern was that they were going to go after the family. I think we forgot to mention before that um, after the, the bus fight, we see um, Hutch cooking breakfast. He's got his pep in his step back and he seems really happy. He's talking yeah. about cooking lasagna at, at that night. And, That's right. Yeah. And, it, it, the next morning after the big fight, yeah, yeah, he's he's a different it's person again. They're having their lasagna for dinner, and uh, cars pull up outside. Hutch, being the person he is, is uh, immediately becomes aware that uh, all right, dinner's over. Race pushes everyone down to uh, his basement, but then he's like opened this pad. He's got a like, secret like, like, panel, a, uh... secret panel to special locks. Don't call nine one one. Yeah, and then and then we have the attack on the and house. So he scene. hasn't got any guns or anything in the house, obviously, because he went to no. get his dad's gun, and now he just gets a baseball bat, which is I pretty th- responsible when you've got little kids, I guess. I thought he, I thought it showed later on in, that he did, but maybe that was from oh, his maybe. dad's house. I don't know. I don't know. Um, or maybe they're yeah. in the basement, and he wants to get them down. Yeah. And... yeah. Because he took, so, he went and got his dad's gun and his badge before, so I figure he didn't have any. Now he just grabs a bat. So we have the home invasion scene, which is again, it's all visceral and brutal and over the top. I get, I was laughing when this happened, like, laughing of just, yep, take that. And I like it sort that, of like it shows he's strategic as well because he like. He waits for the first person to walk by and hit someone Pass. behind him, so he'll shoot. Yeah. So he's got time to get the person in front rather than like hit the yeah. person in front and then get shot by the person behind. So oh, it's, yeah, it, it's very clever. It was very well choreographed. Yeah. yeah, but he doesn't get he doesn't get through everyone, does he? He does get no. Does he's, he get yeah, he's, or something. He's not like he's not unstoppable either. Like he gets bruised and battered and yeah, bloody. Yeah. But in this, and, it looks you know, like a lot of action heroes, like 
even in the Marvel movies and things today, people are falling from, you know, 12 story buildings uh, and yeah, not start. even getting yeah. dirty. So yeah. I really like the fact that, you know, people get hurt in this movie. Uh, like I think they, they, you they see do. the cuts, you see the bruises. Yeah. You, f- you kind of feel the crunches of the And yeah, he uh, doesn't. He, if that was like an 80s movie with Arnold, he would have killed every single person yeah. and probably not got a scratch. But yeah, this is a bit more realistic than that. I mean, it's Which, not realistic, but it's it's more realistic. It's a bit more grounded than that. And then Hutch, who you think is going to take all these guys out. That's It's kind of how that scene's being set up. He get he gets tasered or something like that. Yeah. He gets knocked out anyway, and they drag him out, and the, there's kind of that sort of flashing uh, of him of the, remembering bits of it gets thrown in the boot, boot of the car. So he's been taken down. The, the bad guys have got what they wanted. They've got Hutch, and they're driving him to see Julian. And then you see Hutch waking up in the boot. I think he manages... I don't know how cars work because I haven't been caught in a boot before, but no. he managed to release the boot from a, like a handle inside, pulls it up, sees it, you know, kind of sees where he is, uh, gets the fire extinguisher that's in the car. Yeah. And pushes the back seat forward, starts spraying it in the car. Him. <laughs> and again, I'm just going, this is so good. I'm just enjoying how. A, stupid it is, but enjoyably stupid. It's pretty reckless, uh, but... Yeah, the car flips, and a massive yeah. car accident. Surprisingly, he's getting tossed around the boot, and he's okay, but... You know, well, he hasn't he got a seatbelt on. Everyone else has probably got a seatbelt on, but he's all right. Uh, well, he's fine, yeah. Uh, if yeah. Indiana Jones can survive a nuclear fridge... He yeah, can... uh, it's a movie. Yeah. But, yeah, so the henchman get... ends up with some chunk of metal from the car through him. Yeah. And I, I do. I really like this scene too. There, where he starts talking to him about who he is. Yeah, so it's the it's the elaboration of who he is and why he's where he is now about the the hit that he didn't do because uh, yeah, this guy just wanted a life and he went and checked yeah. on him later and this guy had a life and I love this because it happens again later on in the movie but he's doing the whole exposition thing and, <laughs> and he, he looks, looks down and the guy's <laughs> the guy's died while he's talking. But then uh, that's when he goes, all right, so I've still got to let Dad know that they're possibly yeah. after him. And that, uh, so uh, Hutch goes back to his house, sort of, he kind of looks in and he's kind of just like, oh, i got to clean up. Um, but a little scene uh, when he lets his family out, and I love, uh, he lets his wife and older kid Walk around. They're just looking at these dead bodies and blood yeah, everywhere. The and he's got his impressionable hands over the eyes teenager. Of his, <laughs> he's got his hands over the eyes of his little girl. She's um, a favourite, I think. Absolutely. Oh, but she's the only one that he. You know, she is the. She's the only one that likes him. this one. Well, that's it because she likes him. It was her um, kitty cat bracelet that, that sort of set him off in the search for this whole thing. Um, this that's what started it all. So it's. Daddy daughter relationship. Oh, well, started it. dads of daughters are very protective of their daughters. Yes, yeah, no, uh, yes, it's a thing. So, uh, just and then there's that scene in uh, as he's telling his wife, like, you need to just get away. You She's very earlier, understanding, isn't she? But you were, he said something about no more, and I can't remember it. No, it no more no lies blind. or something. Yeah, there was no more blinds, no, no more blind spots. So that took me back to, all right, so she's stitching up. He's done stuff like this before, but he's kind of said, you can't ask me questions about it. And he's said to her now, all right, just do this, get him away. When you come back, fresh start, I'll tell you everything. That's kind of how I feel that one works. So they go off. So you know the family. Well, in another movie, the family wouldn't be safe because you would get someone go trailing them and find out where they yeah, are. Yeah, and you like, would. And, you'd and see that the bad another, guy would come out with yeah. his gun to the wife's head or something. Yeah, yeah. Or, or even just follow him and then they add another hour to the movie where you, then he has to go and find out where they are. And, and I liked it. It's just a nice, tight movie. And then we got the scene in the retirement home. No, before that, he's in the basement talking to them. Oh, was um, that before? The dudes on the couch. Again, that same sort of thing where one of them is kind of alive still, and he <laughs> has the talk. While and he's he sort his of changed. Like, 
I like how he changes his story. Like, um, yep. I thought it was a little bit dangerous having a record in your collection that that's going to start igniting a bomb. You don't want the kids going through your collection. Let's play this one, Daddy. Oh no, not I, not that one. <laughs> I I love that whole part. Like he's he's dragged all the dead bodies down there. Yeah, some that are obviously dead. He's got them just sitting on the couch. One that's kind of still alive. Does and his then story. he looks. The guy, then he looks down under the the couch and what's there? Oh, the kitty cat bracelet. Kitty cat and, bracelet. Yeah, just like, <laughs> there you are. So the thing that started this whole the thing that started the thing that did, so none of this had, had to happen at all. And I think um, that's where he, is that where he steals the neighbor's car as well. Yes. So yeah, he sets fire to his while house. the house gonna, is yeah like de- uh, being destroyed. Uh, again, just a really lovely scene as he's walking to his car and he's gone doot, doot, to the car and then he's just turned and looked at the um, Pratt neighbours and he's just yeah. gone, naught to 60 in whatever seconds, all right, let's see. And he just takes off in that one. And I'll, again, one of those little little setups that earlier on yeah. pays off now. So, then, yes, then we've got the retirement home scene where uh, you've got a apparently sleeping Christopher Lloyd just watching – uh, a western on his TV, like asleep in front of it, and the and the Russian goons come in and sort of laugh to themselves because gonna get yeah, the old man. Be easy, yeah, this would be easy. So rather than even shooting from behind, they go in front of him, and that's when he just pulls up this, grabs the shotgun. guy's pistol, like disarms it, yep. and then blows the other guy away. <laughs> then shoots the other guy, and then. Um, and then, and just like then the the worker hears the noise and thinks it's a TV. He's like, "You've got to turn it down," and he's suffocating the. <laughs> so yeah, the he, goon. He's in. That, that shot is just so good because you've got the guy going. You need to uh, the worker. It's it's shot from the front, like looking at Christopher Lloyd with just the, the back the of his in head the watching TV. Yeah, and he's got blood all over his face. And he's got his hand over the face, uh, over the mouth of a guy who's suffocating, who's dying anyway. Just very just calmly like suffocating yeah. a guy like he's watching <laughs> just, TV. Yeah, and just um, part, of, part of the job. The two henchmen, um, the one that um, he shoots first is a director, and the other guy's a, a Russian composer. I think there might have been a bit of a fake out. I think you probably would expect in a movie like this that the henchmen were going to kill the dad. Yeah, the, like the first and, time I saw this, it, there was a point where I thought either the dad or the family, something's going to happen, um, one of them's going to get killed. So, yes, absolutely, I thought he was going to die in the, but the first But unfortunately, I'd seen the picture that's behind me. Yeah. I'd seen that picture before I saw it, so I knew that he wasn't going to die in that scene, but it would be really, would have been, and I would have thought uh, another two-minute role for Lloyd that's over and done with. But yeah, I'm but really glad that he, in instead of that, he um, he blew two Russians away with a shotgun, which was fantastic. That, then we go to Hutch buying the factory. So Hutch goes, oh, oh, that's right. He, so I don't know where he gets all this. He gets gold. Uh, he gets guns, all that sort and of I reckon thing. that's the same currency that's in the John Wick movies, those gold and bullions or whatever they're called. So he goes yeah. and buys the... The buys the business, and I like this too because the dad's kind of gone, show me money, I'm out, <laughs> take it. And the and the brother-in-law is just trying to be Mr. Tough Guy and he just gut punches him yeah. <laughs> effortlessly. It's like I've been putting up with your, you know, <laughs> what for this long. Um, and he's just going, and then but there's just, are you all right? Are you okay? Um, what am I going to do now? So, uh, and then we have, it's kind of like the Home Alone scene where he's... There, the uh, montage of setting the, the traps. The montage of setting the traps, yeah. Uh, for the mass killings. <laughs> but like, and then he's, did he, did he have his talk with his, what we didn't know at the time was his brother about you know, trying to help, get him to help out. And he's going, man, no, no, I'm staying out of this. Yeah, because he yeah. said, I think he said they went after dad and he said, yeah, who do you think helped? Like clean up that mess or something. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Um, then so after then, the yeah the go. warehouse montage of him setting up the traps, we have a longer montage about him going to the Russians' place. And I really like this one too because it's so you've got uh, 
is it Russian guy? He's doing another song and dance on stage yeah. and finishes up, and then the lights go down. He can see just Hutch is just kind of having a meal. <laughs> And but we've so seen arrogant. during oh, that no, him, oh. he set oh, yeah, fire yeah. to the obshank and, and burnt yeah. all his paintings and stolen one of his paintings. But again, in another movie, that could have been, you know, they could have spent like a 20 minute action scene on that that yeah. sequence, but they just used, you know, they quick montage. Thing, yeah. And yeah. I think it works better. Like, it's it very really it's very lean, this movie. Because he, he, yeah, he, he destroyed his art, he burnt the money and all that sort of stuff. And then he's just uh, sitting in the in the audience, just waiting for him to meal. come. Yeah. How's the meal? It's a little dry. Um, and he's no. He that, says, "I I was here for the show or something." He says. The and so then you know, they get the whole crowd out, and so it's just him and Julian having a, a mono at mono chat, and gives him an ultimatum. Oh, is that, it's a choice. It's not an ultimate. Yeah, it is a choice. Yeah, like, I guess it's more of a choice, yeah. He's like, all right, we know what type of pe- people we both are. Uh, we can just end this civilly now. Like, you've done this. You attack my family. I have now feel like I've avenged that um, by burning down everything you own. Uh, <laughs> he goes, but that's, you know, we're still not even because you came to my house. Yeah, that's and you it. don't do that. Yeah. Um, so this, it, it establishes a little bit like John Wick. There's kind of rules among these people, or yeah. that's just. Yeah. But I, I like that. There's the whole thing about he's giving him a choice. You can just let it go now. Did he give him a gold? No, he didn't give him anything. He's so attached like, to a bomb thing. That's why they can't. That's why they like, got do out anything. That's right. So he was eating his dinner, and they were going to shoot him, and then he's just like, go on. Ah. Here we go. And that's the thing that happens quite a lot in this movie too, him attached to a bomb. Yeah. Um, and that the, pays off later as well, the yes, bomb. we do that one. It's the choice. We can keep doing this and it's going to end badly for one of us or we just let it go now and live our lives forever. And the scene I love next, I keep saying that too much, so I'm going to try and that a bit. So then we see um, you know, Hutch leaves, walks out with his uh, thumb in the... In the bomb, I can't find out. Look, and he's walked out. He's got into the car, and you see him there behind the steering wheel with his fingers crossed. And you're going, "What's he hoping for?" Yeah, is he? That's yeah. I was going to say that. Is he wanting them to take his deal of not doing anything, or is he really wanting them to chase after him? No, he wanted them to chase him. Uh, He absolutely wanted that. That was like he he looked happy when he saw Julian come out. (laughs) It's like yes. Kicks the car into gear, gets the your obligatory sort of car chase thing car where, chase. where the car gets all smashed up. But he's leading them to the warehouse, so it's, it's is, not just yeah. a car chase anywhere. It's actually a car chase with purpose. We end up at the warehouse, where, which has been repurposed. I think Hutch got shot. Someone got a lucky shot in and they got him in the shoulder or something. Okay. Something happened to him. But um, like he's, he's under pressure and then the window above him cracks open and it's it's Rizza. Do you know who Rizza is? Uh, wasn't she in Greece? Rizzo? <laughs> That's Rizza. Oh. Um, I thought it was RZA when I first read about the story, um, about the movie, but it's, it's actually pronounced Rizza. Um, he's from the Wu-Tang Clan, which is like a rap artist group. And he's good uh, at this. I think he's great. But yeah, so it, it's kind of like the... The gang getting back together because yeah. Dad's there as well. Um, and, and Lloyd again, comes out with his shotguns, looking like a kid in a candy store, like getting to yeah. shoot some more Russians. <laughs> he um, just—he's just having so much fun doing this role. I think. I think they all, kind of all were. And there's so yeah, many yeah. little moments in this warehouse fight too. Like, oh, the, the Rizzo shoots three the... guys with with one shot. Um, <laughs> he's got like Lloyd shooting. Some bomb trap and blowing people up, and yeah, that's him right. just uh, turning a corner with a big grin on his face. <laughs> and the, the the previously set up um, thing that shoots the metal rods through the yeah, three yeah. guys, it's just, and it's brutal again. It's brutal. It's fun, and I'm sitting there with a big grin on my face. Oh, going, it's fun though. It's fun. it's fun. Damn. Uh, <laughs> tell that to the families tell of the, that Russian to the Russians. <laughs> 
Well, they shouldn't have gone to his home. <laughs> they shouldn't have messed with his family. Yeah, never, ever mess with the family. Don't go to my home. And then um, you have them all, like, back to back. Like, yes. The same so, there, which is great. So it's, it's kind of, they're there, they're cornered. Um, it ends up, Julian somehow makes them disperse. I can't, they were out of ammunition or something like that, and he came out of nowhere. They thought he was dead. Yeah, because he goes area. he goes straight to the warehouse and there's an explosion yeah. and he gets knocked away yeah, from that explosion. It. So, so that, they he must they come it. too. Yeah, and he, yeah. he comes back in and shoots at them. They have to break apart and they're sort of like, we've got no ammunition. And so then we've got the scene where um, Hutch gets some press plastic protector thing and again with the, the, the bomb... And it just runs out. It just runs out from behind protection and runs towards yeah. it. It can repel bullets, so I don't know what it is. It can take the force of the bullets, runs at him, runs at him, and then just last minute pulls the pin. The explosion knocks each other away. He comes away clear. <laughs> Russian guy. Uh, Poor Julian. Julian yeah. will not be singing again. No. No, not with that face. Not with that half a head missing. But I... I think another thing that I liked about this being so tight, there was not the, okay, we think the bad guy's dead, but all of a sudden, not like, jumping like last back minute, up at the end. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with the whole, I'm going to boom, boom, boom. No, it was a well, well done scene. I don't yeah, know. It's, all... it's, it's what you go to the cinema for. A little bit of escapism yeah. there. You got a, a clear good guy, a clear bad guy. You know where you stand and you're really but happy he's with it. But flawed. The... Like the, the good guy is flawed. Like it's not like he's. Like the perfect guy. Is he I don't though? think he. Well, he's not. You know, he didn't need to start fights or go after the other people. Like it was sort of a bit it... um, self-serving because he needed to get his fix. What I've read about it is like the characters are kind of addicted to violence, yeah. so they they want to go and and get their fix. I think it was established earlier on, absolutely that in that bus fight scene that. He needed to get hurt to then. It, it was like it activated him. Yeah. Uh, all right. I, I got beaten up. All right. Now I can be That's who like I want to be. The, with the home invasion, he felt like he'd lost control or something and he could yeah. have done something. But like it was his skills really that stopped him because he recognized that they weren't really a threat. But yeah. he felt probably emasculated by that. And then uh, he um, overcorrected, as he says. At the scene, <laughs> and when he's at the records, <laughs> yeah, probably overcorrected. Um, yeah, nice so then little... he finds the the cat and gets the tuna. So oh, it the was cat the that cat was... that was up in the roof, apparently. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Takes a, tu- uh, a can opener and a tin of tuna, and then kind and... of just waits to be arrested. Yeah, well, he tells uh, Rizza and Lloyd to to get going. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And then we go and back then... to the. Back to the start of the movie where there's the inter- uh, interview scene where he just says, I'm nobody. Yeah. And they're looking like, uh, he's like confident that he's just going to walk out of this. Like there's that smugness, I guess, from him where you're not going to be charging me with anything. They start questioning and then all of a sudden their phones ring. They get these phone calls, both of them at the same time. It's like, uh, you're free to go. And so who is he? He must have deep connections somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it kind of sets it up for a possible number two. I hope they don't. It's a, I it's just it's a lovely, no, lovely, lovely. <laughs> the wrong word. It's just an enjoyable, enjoyable. Movie. Yeah, uh, on its own. I don't think we need these characters back. But there's a little kind of end credit scene with um, the dad and the brother. Yeah, adopt a brother they're driving the guns across because they did that. They get a new house, so yeah, and, and and wife's clearly in on it now. Talking about we need to have the basement, whatever. But um, yeah, and you get the little like mid credit scene about the yeah the little RZA and Lloyd road trip. Yeah, so and it's hour and a half done and just a, a fun ride. So I don't know if anyone's picked up during this whether I'd recommend it or not, but uh, I'm saying no. <laughs> Give it two thumbs down. No, I really, I enjoyed the movie the first time I saw it, and it was just as enjoyable watching it 
the second time um, for this review. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Great I really film. recommend it. It's the right length. It's not too long. It doesn't drag on. It's really lean. Um, it's a lot of fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Absolutely and not. It doesn't no. rely too much on CGI. And it's a bit of a throwback movie to where there doesn't have to be an ending with, like, millions of things flying around everywhere. Yeah, yeah you're not talking and about the stakes at the end of the world or anything like that. It's yeah, just, no, it's right. that's really good. And and Lloyd with a shotgun, what more can you want? Yeah. <laughs> it's great. It's a great movie. If you've got this far, thank you for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe to our channel. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, and we're on Instagram. So if you'd like to follow our pages there, that would be great. Again, so uh, I'll say, see you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you next time. And then he hits him with a chair! <laughs>